For the last few years, we've been really struggling on what type of house we want to build for ourselves down in Panama. We've thought about everything, and something that we've really been leaning on recently is a yurt or a dome, something that is basically built out of canvas. And I think within the next 24 hours, we're gonna know for sure if that's what we're doing down in Panama. Yurt parking on the left. It's a little bit smaller, I think, than we expected. Yeah. I've never been in a yurt before. This is my first time stepping foot. Oh my god, look how cute! There's a Christmas tree in there! This is adorable! Oh. I'm very curious to find out if this is like glamping, like glamorous camping, or if it's actually like living in a house. Jordan and I have been doing probably for the last like two and a half years since we decided we wanted to build a tiny house. We have been trying to stay at Airbnbs mm -hmm. that may be a potential idea for what we're gonna do. So a yurt is something I've always kind of had in the back of my mind. Ooh, that's hot. But I've been a little bit doubtful about it because you're kind of limited to what you can do on the interior because it's, it's one shape. But the thing that I do love about it is that it's all just one big room, one big space, which is what we've been used to living in the bus for two and a half years and now the workshop for almost a year now. Wow, they made these out of actual sticks. Yeah. That's incredible. That's what makes it so much cooler, I feel like. Than the lattice? Because all the lattice ones that I see, I like hate. Hi, look, sweetie. Look who just woke up. Oh, good <laughs> Oh my god, good girl. Oh, big stretch. <laughs> I love that. I've noticed how much Sadie's already been paying attention to what I do. Hi and just our surroundings around us. Like, if the TV's on, she's like locked onto that thing. And I just know that the things that we're doing with her now will just kind of set the tone. So, oh, Bubba. So I wonder how much all this travel will influence her and all this traveling around. And if that'll make us have a little nomadic baby that just loves traveling because I think this is like her fourth or fifth different home, maybe sixth. Six different homes she stayed in already, and she's not even three months old yet. <gasps> you hear that? You guys hear that owl? I don't think I've ever heard one like that before. We had a long day of travel, so we're pretty tired in here. We got some snow, but it looks like it's gonna clear up, so we're gonna have one last glass of wine and see if we can catch some stars. The only bad things about relying on a wood stove for heat is having to get up in the middle of the night and stuff it. I'm not enough of a professional yet where I can choke it down properly, but it's 5 a.m. now, so it lasted for a very long time. But it's 19 degrees outside, so it's very, very important that we keep this thing going because it's freaking cold out. Whew, all right, I'm going back to bed. Is she awake or is she like... She's starting to wake up. I had a dream last night, or at some point this morning, that uh, it snowed all the way up to the Hobbit door and we couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> this looks insane. <gasps> oh my god. Sweetie, what the heck? Man, this is insane. Oh, little Bubba's awake. <laughs> I think she's ready to eat. <laughs> I know. I know. There you go, baby. So you guys are probably wondering, where the heck did this baby sleep last night? <laughs> and we have this awesome, awesome little portable bassinet. But I had brought her into the bed with me this morning to cuddle a little bit. 
So you know how I told you guys on my birthday she did her first five hour stretch. Well, a few nights after that, she did her first seven hour stretch. I was like, we made it, we did it. We're getting over the hump here. Uh, no, not so much. <laughs> Last night, she was up every two hours again, just like normal, just like old times, <laughs> which is fine. You know, that's what they say. It's <clears throat> going to be a very kind of up and down um, process to eventually her sleeping through the night. I don't know about you guys, but I, I know they can say they can change, but I am convinced this little Bubba is going to have bright blue eyes just like her daddy. <laughs> So I just want to give you guys a little tour of the outside here. I just love the setup of this so much. The simplicity. So we got the yurt here. This awesome little deck area here. Big old wood stack over here. The shower, which actually I'm a little bit bummed about. You can see it's closed for winter. I was really hoping to be doing my Wim Hof in here this morning, but um, to prevent the pipes from freezing, they actually just turn the water off completely. And you got the little outhouse, which I gotta say, this is the nicest outhouse I have ever seen in my life. It's so clean. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. On the move again we're moving and grooving this is gonna be like our first I feel like travel vlog in like years love I need to let everyone in on a secret what Kaylee really likes towns for any of you guys that are new here I really like towns so we're actually heading to a town right now in Vermont what is it labeled the most beautiful town in America the most beautiful like American village in America especially around Christmas. Now, all you guys know, I freaking love Christmas. She loves towns and she loves Christmas. So this is just like, probably one of the best days of my life. <laughs> it is chilly up here. My hands are freezing right now. I got Sadie in her bear suit. She's all tucked up against me because it's so, so frigid. It's well in the teens. Woodstock is a super old town in America that was actually one of the first big tourist hotspots of the Northeast. People used to come here just to check out the architecture and a lot of those buildings are still standing today. But the only thing that's kind of a bummer is almost everything's closed. It looks like a lot of the, these stores, a lot of the restaurants, the cafes, the coffee shops, which we're most interested in, they're all shut down. And some of them even have signs saying that they're looking for staff. And something I read about a little bit is this labor shortage actually affected Vermont a lot. This is one of the most affected states in the United States. And this is something that we were, we've been talking a lot about as we've been preparing to open our own business in Vermont. These small towns in Vermont have such a unique feel. It's really hard to ex explain unless you've been here. They make all their own cheese, they make all their own meats. Maple syrup. Plenty of maple syrup. They make their own beer, own produce, everything. It seems like almost anything in any store you go to is made in the Locally. state yeah. or in the town. And what we've been spending a lot of time looking at is the coffee and how much coffee is made here and how many specialty coffee roasters are here. Another thing that's big with Vermont is or the word organic. Everything's organic. And the amount of organic coffee that they have is blowing my mind because we've tried to source organic coffee for two years. And it's been such a challenge for us to find organic coffee. We found it once. We found it one time. And we had to go deep into the jungle of Panama to where the Nobe tribe is to find organic coffee in that town. And the funny thing was those farmers told us the coffee was organic, they showed it as organic, but then there was like no nothing to regulate if it was organic or not. And that's the thing, it's like even though it's USDA organic, there's no USDA people going down to these countries and actually verifying if it's organic. So I'm not saying that this is all a lie or that this isn't true, but... We have some skepticism around the whole organic thing. And we got a little digging to do to see how much this is real and how much of this isn't. Right. That'll be in a future episode one day. I don't think so. So 
after a long day of travel, of breastfeeding, of taking care of a little two month old, the last thing that I wanna do is grocery shop and worry about what I'm gonna be cooking for dinner. So that's why I'm very excited to announce that this video today is sponsored by Green Chef. So Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that delivers meal plans straight to your doorstep. Tonight, we're making- <laughs> You're so excited. <laughs> just wait, just wait. <laughs> Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Boom, boom, chip. <laughs> <laughs> boom boom chicken honey you know this is from tell from, the people it's from panama tell the people it's from big daddies in panama that's right <laughs> so it's pretty amazing because it comes with a whole page here that has all of the directions on how to cook this dang thing and then you got these pre-packaged bags <laughs> You can tell I'm very excited. I'm I'm really loving this right now. I'm just honestly. here watching. All right, we got carrots, we got snap peas, we got scallions, cabbage, all the stuff we need to make boom boom chicken. <coughs> honestly, the coolest thing that um, Green Chef offers is you can pick what kind of meal plan you want. So this meal plan, we ended up going with paleo. You know, this pan works. Right. Chicken. Boom boom sauce. Oh my gosh. Doesn't it? Look at that, sweetie. Woo! This whole meal took less than 30 minutes to make. It was so fast. That's because most of the ingredients, they're all pre-portioned out. They give you exactly what you need. If you guys want to try out Green Chef, bring the family together, you can go to greenchef.us slash nomadic10 and you can use promo code nomadic10 to get 10 free meals plus free shipping on your first box. You can get all the information down in the description below, but it's time to pick out now. It's been nearly two days that we've been living in a yurt now, and I feel like this whole experience was so important for us. I didn't think I would like it at all. We've lived really minimally and alternatively for three years in a school bus and then one year in a workshop. And I really thought I, at this point I'm ready to live in a real house. Even if, it's a t uh, even if it's a tiny house, just a real house with solid walls. I would love to live in a yurt. I, I have a new appreciation for yurts and if we were in Vermont or we were in the United States or we were somewhere dry. 100%. The thing that I love so much about it is that it reminds us, both of us, of living in the bus. And what we love so much about living in the bus is the simplicity of it and just everything being right there. Here's your kitchen, <laughs> here's your bedroom. Here's your living room. And me, I'm a, I'm a mess and I lose everything. <laughs> That's true. That's and I misplace point. everything. And in the bus, I never lost anything. That's not true. Oh, not true. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a lot easier for me to find because it was only 90 square feet. But a yurt, it just isn't right for us, which like breaks my heart because I would love to build one of these in Panama, not only because I love the shape, but we could put one of these up in weeks, maybe Absolutely. even days. Yeah. And that's the thing, like we walked into this space and we were just like, immediately in love like we just felt that coziness that appreciation for that small space again once again but then as the last you know 48 hours have gone we you look up here and you start to see some a little bit of mold up around where a lot of the airflow goes up yeah. here you look on the canvas outside and there's spots of mold and we're in Vermont we're in a place that isn't super humid that doesn't have 90% humidity all year round exactly. you look in the door frame here and you can't see it now because it's dark out, but there's little gaps, little holes, little spaces all throughout it that allow air to come in. It's really hard to vent the kitchen so you can't get all that steam and all that wet air out. As you can see from our teapot and all the steam's rising right now, you can't get something to suck that out because you're basically living in a tent. That's basically what it is. That's basically what it is. So for what it is, for what it's worth, I love it. But for our house, not gonna cut it. We're gonna build a real house down in Panama, but we had to scratch this itch. We did. Because we were entertaining and this we had, thought And we had hard. never been in a year before. We'd never stayed in a year. We'd never really seen one in person. So that's why we came here, to come stay in here, to experience it, and to get a feel for it before we mixed that whole idea. So this is where we're gonna let you guys go. We hope you love following along in this one. We loved staying in this year for the last couple of days. And Kaylee keeps saying, 
this won't be our last time back here. Definitely not. We'll be back. We'll be back here for sure. So thank you guys so much for following along. We love you guys so much. We'll see, see you guys in the next one. See you next time. Honey. I did it. I did it again. We haven't no, done no, that no, so no, long no, no, and no. I did it again. Ready? I'll do it one more time. <gasps> see you later. Bye.